Please note that while designing heifer feeding programs, it is important to consider the following. Feeding heifers too much energy leads to fat infiltrating the mammary glands, inhibiting development of secretory tissue, thus reducing milk yield. Ukirisha zaidi, tena kukona shida zake. Kukona kama konfano, ukirisha chakura kama yo dairy meal, ama pengine upate maindi, ushage bunga mingi, upee ngombe, unakuta kwamba kukona ugojo kama, kama lumen overload, ama acidiosis, ambao chakula wakati inashagwa pale kwa lumen ama kwa tubu hii ya kwanza unakuta kwamba kukona acid fulani ambayo inatoka na hiyo acid inaharibu tuseme u, yani tuseme ukuta ama wall ya hiyo lumen na tena zaidi hata inakuwa absorbed in the in the nini in the blood system na ikiwa absorbed in the blood system hiyo tayari ni sumu na inaweza kuwa ngombe so kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha kwamba hata kama hiyo ni dairy meal lazima idishwe kulingana na kiasi lakini isiwe too much otherwise inao itakuwa ni kama vile tu ngombe yakikuwa amekosa Underfeeding results in small-bodied heifers, which experience difficulty during calving. Kuna wezekano wa huyo ngobe kuchikwa na magojwa ile inaretwa na nini? Inaretwa na kutorisha chakula, chakula kizuri ama chakula kile ni cha quality ya juu ama ubora wa juu. Na magojwa kama hayo unakuta kwamba ni magojwa kama milk viva ile ngombe ambao baada ya kuzaa kwa sababu ya upungufu wa madini kama kasi ya munakuta kwa ba ngombe baada ya kuzaa imeanguka na iwezi kusimama mpaka itibiwe steaming up refers to providing extra concentrate to a pregnant heifer in the last four weeks of pregnancy this extra concentrate should be fed in the milking parlor if possible to accustom the heifer to the parlor ngombe wa steaming ni ile ngombe ambayo iko na jao kwa tumbo iko na mimba. So tunajaribu kupanua kiwele. Tunajaribu kumpatia hiyo ngombe nguvu ili wakati anaposaa ako na nguvu ya kuistahimili hiyo hiyo stress. Correct feeding through the transition period helps to maximize feed intake in early lactation through improved health and appetite. An effective transition feeding program will help to promote higher earlier peak milk yield resulting in greater production over the whole lactation, reduced live weight loss in early lactation, better conception rate, fewer metabolic disorders lower veterinary expenses and fewer cow losses, reduced stress for staff throughout the calving period, improved pasture utilization and reduced feed costs. Pre-calving diet. Ideally, the diet should consist of restricted pasture up to 2 kilograms dry matter per day with low potassium grass hay or straw fed to appetite. Feed a specialist dry cow supplement such as lead up pellets at 2 to 3 kilograms per day for a minimum of 14 days prior to calving. Unrestricted access to clean water is essential to help maintain the high intake of dry feeds required in a pre-calving diet. Pasture also requires less chewing and is less feeling than hay. Finally, ensure the feeding area is large enough for all the cows. If all cows cannot get access to feed, timid cows and heifers will not eat to appetite, leading to reduced intakes and metabolic problems after calving. Post-calving diet Do not lose the advantages gained through good pre-calving nutrition by underfeeding after calving. High quality forage should be available to appetite and if insufficient pasture is available, high quality silage or hay should be provided. In addition, high energy concentrate feed balanced for protein, minerals, trace elements and vitamins is essential. 
wakati unapopea ngombe chakula kuko na mambo mawili matatu lazima uangalie kwanza lazima ujue ni breed ya ngombe gani unarisha ya pili tena utaangalia size ya ngombe hiyo ya tatu the okay the production system inakaa wapi kama ni ile ngombe anakaa kwa sisi unakuta kwamba pengine atahitaji chakula kilio chini kidogo kiasi ukimlinganisha na yule mwingine ambaye anatembea so kwa hivyo kama uko na chakula unatakikana uliche kiasi kile ambao chafaa in summary good feed management throughout the dry and transition periods can give big benefits in milk production health and reproductive performance in the next lactation Feed for a minimum of 14 days prior to calving at the rate of 2 to 3 kilograms per head per day with forage available to appetite. After calving, switch to the lactating dairy diet. Ensure fresh, clean drinking water is available. Feeding the lactating cow Maximizing milk yield by meeting the cow's nutrient requirements is the aim of a feeding program. The nutrient requirements will largely depend on the amount of milk produced, which in turn depends on the stage of lactation, the period from curving. Other factors affecting nutrient requirements are pregnancy and maintenance. Mukulima What nutrient does your lactating cow require? Note, your cow needs the following in the right ratios. Energy, protein, minerals, vitamins, water, lactation period. Mukulima, it has been established that lactation period has four phases. Each phase has specific observations and tasks you should endeavor to. Note, feeding should be based on these phases. Phase 1, 1 to 70 days. The first phase lasts from curving to peak milk production which occurs at about 70 days. The health status and feeding of the cow during this phase are critical to its entire lactation performance. In an attempt to maximize milk production while maintaining good health, feed high levels of concentrates limited to 50 to 60% of diet dry matter. High protein diet is important, 18% crude protein. Phase 2, 71 to 150 days. The second phase lasts from peak lactation to mid-lactation. The aim should be to maintain peak milk production for as long as possible with milk yield declining at the rate of 8 to 10% per month. 15 to 18% whole ration crude protein content is recommended. concentrates high in digestible fiber for example wheat or maize bran rather than starch can be used as an energy source phase 3 151 to 305 days the third phase lasts from mid to end lactation during which the decline in milk production continues animals can be fed on lower quality roughage and more limited amounts of concentrate than during the earlier two phases phase 4 dry period 306 to 365 days this phase lasts from the time cow is dried to the start of the next lactation The cow continues to gain weight primarily due to the weight of the fetus. Proper feeding of the cow during this stage will help realize the cow's potential during the next lactation and minimize health problems at calving time. For example, ketosis, milk fever, 
dehydration and dystocia. Drying a cow. Mukulima, to minimize stress on the drying cow, consider the following options. Reduce feed intake to maintenance level. Withdraw concentrate. If the cow is a low yielder, just stop milking. If the cow is a high yielder, practice intermittent milking, skipping some milking times, milk only in the mornings so as to reduce milk synthesis caused by pressure building up in the udder. Temporarily withdraw water or reduce the amount for very high yielders to reduce milk synthesis. After milking is stopped, treat infuse all the quarters with long-acting antibiotics to prevent mastitis from developing. In cattle, metabolic diseases, which produces an acute, temporary, but potentially fatal deficiency, includes milk fever and bloat. Milk fever is a common disorder in dairy cattle that generally affects older, high-producing cows. At first, cow experiences muscle tremors, lack of appetite and unsteadiness. Eventually, cow is unable to rise. Death can occur if the cow is not treated promptly. The key to prevention of milk fever is management of a close-up dry cow which should be kept on a low calcium diet. In early lactation, high-yielding cows should receive as much calcium as possible. High-risk cows can be injected with vitamin D3 two to three days prior to calving. Blot. Blot is a risk when animals are grazing young, lush pasture, particularly if the pasture has high legume content, clover or lucerne. Animal stops grazing and is reluctant to walk. The left side of the abdomen is distended. The animal strains to urinate, defecate, and staggering. Pasture management. Legumes should be introduced into the diet gradually over several days. Avoid cows gorging on new pastures by feeding them on other feeds before letting them out to graze. Silage, hay or more mature pasture can be used to reduce the cow's appetite. Initially, cows should only be allowed access to the pasture for short periods, one hour or so, and monitored closely during grazing and immediately after removal. Cutting and wilting the pasture for two to three hours prior to feeding reduces the risk of bloat. Za, chakula za ngombe zile tunapanda mashambani Uki, ukikata na urisha ngombe ngombe kuko na wezekano ata wakushikwa na hari tunaita blot ama kufula tubo na hiyo ni shida moja ya pili wakati unapokata hiyo nyasi ama chakula chochote cha ngombe abacho chatoka tam, chambani kibishi ni lazima ukikate kikauke maji yende shini kwa sababu kile kitu tunarenga sana wakati tunaricha cha ngombe zetu ni dry matter content ama tuseme dry matter ngombe ako na kitaji ya kila siku kiwango fulani na ukimpa chakula ile iko na chembe chembe ya maji mingi sana ni kumaanisha kwamba itakubidi upe chakula kingi ndio afikishe kiwango kile cha dry matter content ambacho kinachotakikana so kwa hivyo lazima uikaushe uzikate uzikate hata kama ni nepia glass ama kama ni nyazi kama hii ambao tunaona hapa mbele yetu ama tuseme hata chakula zile zingine bishi na umpe direct ama mara moja ni lazima umpe baada maybe ya siku moja ama tuseme baada ya masaa ikitegemea na hali yanga Na pia najua kitu kimoja. Kwa mfano hata wakati unaenda kukama, ukiwa rafiki kwa ngombe hata inaitawajilia maziwa yote. Lakini ukiwa rafu, sangi unatembea tembea na fimbo na sauti kubwa kubwa, 
utakuwa natisha ngombe hali wanakupatia faida kubwa kwa hivyo ningaimisa watu ambao ni wafugaji wawe wanapenda wanyama wao I see.